My name is Jay Malkani. Uh, I am the Director of Product Management for uh, vRealize Operations. That's the new name uh, for vCenter Operations. I'm joined by my colleague here. Yep, I'm uh, Tom Finley. I am a staff engineer with the vCenter Operations Manager team, or vRealize Operations team. Uh, and uh, today we are here to uh, present to you uh, what's new and what's next in vRealize operations. Um, the reason this, uh, this uh, presentation is uh, uh, called vCenter operations is because when we gave this session in San Francisco, the name change hadn't happened yet in VMworld San Francisco. So, uh, but the new name is vRealize. And uh, let's, uh, let's take you through uh, some of the new capabilities and the new uh, features which we have uh, released in this product suite. So uh, first of all, standard disclaimer, you know, I am going to be talking about features which are there in the product today and some of which, which are in development, which are in the roadmap. Uh, and so uh, standard disclaimer that uh, we can't be liable for things which are not yet delivered and pricing and packaging of these uh, features uh, have not been determined and these are subject to change before, before they are released. So, uh, Quick uh, show of hands before I get started, so I know uh, what level is this audience is. How many of you have actually um, uh, installed and uh, played around with uh, with vRealize operations? Okay, about 70% of the audience. Okay, good. So uh, that gives me a good idea, uh, and I'll keep the conversation um, structured so that both uh, sides of the house have um, uh, have good takeaways. So uh, this is uh, VMware's uh, um, picture for uh, what we call uh, the software-defined data center, right? So uh, for those of you who have had uh, vCenter operations before, you know that it came with a lot of out-of-box content for vSphere, right? I mean, uh, that's what was VMware's um, main uh, product line, and that's what we wanted to provide management coverage for. But as uh, <clears throat> VMware has also moved uh, 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 and extended uh, our coverage for uh, other elements of the data center, right? Uh, we have now a virtual networking with NSX. We have uh, virtual storage with vSAN. Uh, we have uh, uh, a hybrid cloud and public cloud coverage with vCloud Air. Our management tools have really become the control plane to manage the software-defined data center, right? Uh, where uh, where uh, things are provisioned uh, in software and they're provisioned through our cloud automation suite. Uh, they, uh, the, the software defined constructs need to be operated and managed through a single pane of glass through vRealize operations, through the cloud operation suite, through log insight product. And then the cost optimization happens through, through the <clears throat> cloud business suite. And then the applications which are running on top uh, need to be provisioned on top of this, this infrastructure, on top of the software-defined data center. These applications need to be monitored and, uh, and uh, taken through their entire life cycle. And there are many other uh, new products which are coming out, uh, uh, such as through the DevOps, uh, to manage the DevOps life cycle, we just released vRealize CodeStream. We just announced that in this VM world. And finally, the, the virtual desktops and the end user devices which are running on top of the infrastructure. So the entire end-to-end -end management of that is, is through the vRealize suite, uh, which is what uh, we are, uh, the 6.0 version of this has been launched at VMworld. These are the three uh, mainstays of this suite, the cloud automation suite. Uh, previously, uh, the products here were vCloud Automation Center. Now it's just vRealize Automation. The Cloud Operation Suite, the products here are vRealize Operations and Log Insight. And, uh, and the Cloud Business Suite, uh, the products, they're coming from the Digital Fuel Acquisition and Chargeback Manager and all those which, which uh, uh, are actually help with, uh, with the cost analysis, both from the provider side and the consumer side. A simple way to, be, to think about these three suites is build, run, and optimize. Or day zero setup of the cloud, day, day one or day two running of the cloud, and um, day three is when you look at costs and you further optimize, optimize your cloud deployment. 
So today I'm going to be talking about that second pillar, right? That's what Tom and I are going to be talking about, the cloud operation suite. What are the new capabilities that we are releasing or we have released this VMworld at, uh, in vRealize 6, uh, vRealize operation 6? Uh, a quick uh, overview of vRealize operations is uh, the goal is really for us to give you, our, our customers, uh, the, the IT professionals, a single pane of glass, a cloud operations console across your private, public, and hybrid clouds. So how do we do this? We do this by um, a variety of different approaches. First of all, we integrate the various operations disciplines. Uh, these operations disciplines are performance management, capacity management, configuration and compliance management. So we have that very integrated approach. Why? Because these are very, very interrelated, right? Performance issues happen because of capacity constraints. When you're planning your capacity, you have to be aware of performance SLAs. Performance issues can happen because of configuration issues. And I actually gave a session this morning on, on vRealize operations and uh, NSX. And you see, like, in the software-defined networking, a lot of the configuration issues come into play when you're looking at network performance, right? Um, uh, MTU mismatches and uh, VLAN IDs, all, all those things. So we need to take care of all these things and correlate them in order to serve up uh, what are the actual issues impacting your environment uh, from, from not only the server, but also all the way from the virtual server to the fabric, all the way to the storage layer. Underneath that, to make that all happen is really the the platform, the operations platform. This platform is built on analytics. We do behavioral learning of the environment. We have dynamic thresholds uh, which observe uh, the metrics coming through your environment, see what are, their, uh, uh, what are the normal operating ranges and alert you when, they, um, when things are outside of the normal uh, behavior. There's uh, a full-blown reporting capability. This is absolutely new. For those of you who worked with the 5.x versions of uh, vCenter operations, know that there were perhaps a few handful of reports, maybe 10 or 12 reports, which were based on vSphere capacity. Now we have a full-blown reporting engine um, in the platform, which allows you to report on performance data, capacity data, config data, not only for vSphere, but also for for, for networking, for storage, for all heterogeneous management, and you can generate your own custom reports. We correlate um, infrastructure data with application data, which comes from Hyperic or the infrastructure navigator. We have correlated the, the alerts which are generated from within. Uh, we, we realize operations with uh, unstructured data which comes from Log Insight, and there's a bi-directional integration between these, these two tools as well. So a lot of new capabilities which we'll showcase today, which, are, which, are, which form the core of this operations platform. More importantly, this entire platform is now extensible, completely extensible by our partners, by our customers, through what, for the first time again, we have now fully supported, just like vSphere has APIs, we realize operations has fully supported public APIs, which allow, which will allow partners to extend the tool, um, ne network and storage vendors to extend capabilities of we realize operations and develop management packs to provide uh, domain specific content for, for operations teams. So what are the major areas of investment for us? You know, what's new? Right? Where, where are we taking we realize operations? The three major areas of investment for us, the first one is operations for STDC and cloud. We want to be or, and will be the best in class operations tool for the software defined data center period, right? Which means for us, we are going to provide a lot of out of box content for vSphere, for NSX, for vSAN, vWall, all the software-defined data center constructs that VMware is coming out with, they will be first-class objects with their own out-of-box uh, views, reports, alerts, correlations, analytics uh, provided for them in vRealize operations. The second area of 
of investment is really to ensure that operations teams can be more efficient, right? Can reduce the mean time to identification of issues, reduce the mean time to resolution of these issues, build, give them all the operations features that they need, right? Around uh, problem uh, definitions, uh, uh, problem alerting, uh, to seeing what are the recommendations to resolve problems, uh, automate the, re the remediation of those problems, have the deep dive reports and views in order to analyze issues. Uh, and, and these issues are like health risk efficiency issues. So really provide all the features and capabilities for ops teams to be more efficient. And the third and probably the most important area is to, be is to become the platform for big data analytics. So why is this important? Well, when, if you really look at uh, the evolution of uh, we realize operations, and I can sort of have that perspective because I've been with uh, in the product management team having released the 1.0 version of we realize operations, is that as we've sort of moved and expanded out of just vSphere content, and we're getting content from now storage devices, right, through the management pack for storage devices, if you, some of you may have used, from network tools. All these bring in a lot more data, a lot more metrics into, into vRealize operations. And in order to, for us to uh, correlate all this information and store the time series information for all these metrics, we really needed to evolve our model from a scale-up model into a scale-out uh, model. So, uh, and, and really develop the platform so that we can uh, really do big data analytics, big data correlation, and you'll see a lot of investments in that space. So uh, let's, let me take you through a few uh, use cases uh, through the tools, uh, showcase to you along with Tom what, um, what are the, um, the new capabilities within, within we realize operations. And from now on, I'm not going to be showing you any more uh, slides with uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, words. These will be mostly screenshots from the actual tool. So we still retain these three uh, perspectives in, the, in we realize operation six. This is our, our main dashboard. We showcase uh, three perspectives around health, which, is, which talks about what are the immediate problems in your environment, risks, which talks about building issues, things which are not health issues right now. They're, they're, not, they're not going to cause severe outages and performance degradation, degradation right now. But if you don't take care of these issues, then they are going to turn into health issues. So this is, this is all about, about the future, about building issues. And the third is opportunities to optimize. How can you improve or streamline your operations? How can you reduce waste? How can you improve your consolidation ratios? All those things. But here's the difference, right? Is that as we sort of go down and we focus more around the software-defined data center, what we've uh, really brought in the, the perspectives around health risk and efficiency from vSphere, from NSX, from, from the various uh, software-defined storage um, uh, devices. And how we've done it is that we've separated the platform from the content, right? So we realize operations becomes the operations platform and all the content from these various data sources, from storage, from network, from server, um, from public clouds, comes in on top as a management pack. These management packs can typically be downloaded from solutionsexchange.vmware.com. If you go there, you'll see a bunch of management packs. I think last time I checked, there were maybe about 50 odd management packs, which were which are, uh, some of them are published from VMware, like VMware develops those management packs, we develop them, and, and many of them are from our partners. There's a management packs from EMC, from Brocade, from VCE, right, which bring in content for, for, for these uh, domains. Now the difference with vRealize Operation 6.0 is that these management packs are not just adapters or data streams. They actually come with a, a full solution, which means they come with their alert definitions, um, their views, 
their reports, the entire solution which is required in order to manage that infrastructure so that it can be correlated with other things and serve as a fully operational tool. So here you see in this page, there are many management packs here. Um, there's a management pack for Amazon AWS, which is a public cloud. So we, that management pack gets data from CloudWatch APIs and, and generates views and reports and dashboards for AWS. Even vSphere itself becomes a management pack, right? It's just a management pack which brings in data from vSphere. So we are truly becoming a hybrid and heterogeneous operation solution. Here's uh, a, a view of the management pack for NSX, and this brings in all the logical topology information from, uh, the, from the network devices. You know, all the network devices are now VMs, and uh, for example, the NSX controller, the NSX edge, and all the topology information from the logical devices is brought in, correlated with the physical devices, with the first hop switch, and uh, the metrics, the capacity information, um, and the performance um, uh, problems and alerts are all brought into v, v realize operations. So we have version 1.0, which was released as part of the 5, on top of 5.x, but with 6.0, there's a version 2 of this NSX management pack, which was released. Here's the management pack for storage devices. This gets uh, information um, from the HBA to, and the fabric, uh, to the fabric and all the way down to the LAN for SAN uh, storage uh, using uh, SIM and SMIS protocols and also VASA, which is the VMware Aware Storage APIs, which all the storage vendors adhere to to get their storage topologies into vSphere. That allows us to standardize storage topologies across many different storage vendors and have a, a single view across the entire SAN, across the entire fabric, correlated to the various LANs from the HPA and give you that end-to-end -end storage visibility around what is happening within the, within the storage uh, infrastructure that you have. With, with VRealize 6.0, the management pack for storage devices, we have now expanded to NFS and iSCSI environments as well. And we will have coverage in the management pack of, for storage devices for vSAN, vWall, vFlash, because now we have to learn with vSAN what, is the, what are the storage metrics and um, the storage latency of SSDs, of Flash, of IO cache, because now vSAN, as you know, works on di disk attached storage. So all this information coming in through this one management pack, which is the management pack for storage devices. Uh, th th we want to serve as the single pane of glass. I told you about the cloud operations console, which brings in data from private and public clouds together in one console. So we have a management pack for uh, vCloud Air, which uh, if, you're, if you have workloads, if your organization is, is hosting workloads with us uh, on, um, on our vCloud Air public cloud service, you will have... Um, the, the view and visibility of those workloads and the operations from within we realize of ops. And also uh, other public clouds as well. So there's a management pack for Amazon I, we talked about, which gives you that visibility from your workloads hosted on AWS into, uh, into we realize operations. So when you realize, we, uh, when you <laughs> install we realize operations, right, uh, what what, how, how do you uh, essentially set up, right, the policies for uh, uh, getting all these operations metrics from different environments? We have now worked on a very simple first config wizard. This first config wizard when, uh, comes up when you install the, the product for the first time and asks you a few simple questions. For example, how much of capacity do you want to overcome it? How, what is the, uh, what is your, uh, what type of alerts do you want to get? What type of alerts are you interested in? And when you answer those questions, what that does is it translates that into a set of policies, which is then applied to the environment to show you the right level of alerts and, uh, and uh, problems that you're interested in. So these alerts now are very different than what any other 
uh, operations tool in the industry offers today. Because all the other operations tools, what they do is they uh, look at metrics, and then they, they may even have uh, some trending of those metrics and will tell you when that metric is misbehaving. But we go many steps further. Our alerts now are problem alerts. What they do is they actually correlate metrics from across the stack, from across various uh, elements of server, storage, and network, and tell you what is the exact problem. Is the, pro is the VM performance slow because there is a storage latency issue? Right. So these are the type of correlations we are bringing in. And that's why these alerts, these are absolutely brand new in We Realize 6.0, which we uh, internally call problem alerts, because they are backed up by certain problem definitions, which I'm going to show you. So here's a performance alert, which was uh, contributing to degraded health. And you can click on it to see the details. The details here show you what are the various symptoms across the stack that have caused this issue to happen. In this case, uh, you'll see that uh, there are many symptoms which got triggered. But based on the correlation of these symptoms, we found out that the problem is because there are many sn snapshots of this machine. And, and you know this, as uh, many of you who have dealt with, uh, uh, with vSphere environments know that if you have snapshots turned on, then there's a write uh, happening every time you are uh, trying to uh, make a change in the in the virtual machine across those snapshots, and that can cause uh, uh, storage uh, latency issues. So, so, so you know, this is the level of intelligence that we are providing. So, you get the recommendations, and you can actually even take actions from right within the alert. This is also new in We Realize Operation 6.0, where we have we now for the first time have an action framework. So, you can take actions which can be vCenter actions, vCO workflows, or even um, Python scripts. In case you've written your own Python scripts in your IT environment, you can attach them to a problem definition. So how do you do this? What is a problem definition? Well, we've actually opened up the platform to you, right? So you can actually go into we realize operations and look up a problem definitions. You can see what are the various symptoms that make up a particular problem definition. And which symptoms, when, when, when occur, actually trigger that problem definition into a problem alert. Here's a list of the various problem definitions. Right? These may come from one or many management packs. You can drag and drop uh, symptoms uh, into a particular problem definition to construct it or deconstruct it or edit an already existing problem definition, which may come out of the box. Not only that, you can even add the remediation actions r within the problem definition, so that when the alert triggers, you have an action associated with it. And your ops teams can actually trigger the action right from vRealize operations without actually launching another tool or figuring out what to do or orchestrating something else. So these actions, for example, we were talking about the issue of uh, deleting older snapshots. You can trigger that action from right within the alert. And you can add many other actions as administrators if you wanted to, so your ops teams have different options on what to do with the specific issue, uh, alert. From within the problem definition, problem alert, you can launch now the log insight product to look at correlated uh, logs for that specific issue. For, so for example, if you had storage latency issues, you could search for other storage problems that might be happening, which may be only exposed in unstructured data and not in metrics. For example, a SCSI path may be dead. And you can go launch the Log Insight tool, generate your queries there for that object, and you get just the logs which are relevant to that specific problem alert. But you, now you may ask, like, you know, well, why should I have two tools? Right? If, you, if there's only one tool which I'm trying to use as a single pane of glass, and you're now asking me to use two, well, that's not the case. right? Because now you, we have a bi-directional integration. So what that means is from within Log Insight, you can 
create your structured queries and route the notifications back into vRealize operations so you can still use that as a single pane of glass. So really um, full coverage for unstructured data as well as structured metrics for end-to-end -end operations. I'm now going to pass on to my colleague Tom who's going to talk to you more around capacity and configuration features as well. Yeah, so thank you very much, Jay. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is just to shift gear a little bit from talking about uh, health problems and start talking about uh, capacity problems. So in vRealize operations, we're breaking capacity into three main areas. The first one is capacity remaining, which tells us how much capacity I have left in my environment. The other one is time remaining, which tells me in how much time I'm going to run out of capacity. And the last one is stress, which tells me how many objects in my environment are consistently running in high workload. Here you can see our new uh, capacity remaining detail page. And in this particular example, you can see one of the vSphere clusters that I have in my environment. We're breaking the vSphere clusters into four main capacity dimensions. The first one is CPU, second one, memory, disk I.O. and network I.O. And we're measuring each one of them based on our two capacity models, which are allocation and demand. Another net new functionality that we've added called projects. So projects is a new capacity planning tool that will help you to run through a capacity planning exercise by adding or removing consumers and providers to your, to your environment. And let me just deep dive, like get, you, get you a little bit deeper with that. So in this particular example, uh, I've been asked by my management before VMware to provision four new SharePoint servers into my lab environment. And I thought that I don't have enough room for that, and I just wanted to make sure if I can provision those four SharePoint servers or not. For that, I, I created uh, a project in my system. And in this particular case, I wanted to model those four SharePoint servers that I'm planning to add into my environment. There are three ways that I can use in order to model a consumer in this particular case, I'm talking about VM, in my environment. The first one is to manually enter the values for the future VM. The second one is to use the existing profiles that I have that coming out of the box of the product. And the last one is to take an existing VM that I already have in my environment and take, and take its values and just reuse them uh, for my analysis. So in this particular case, I already add a SharePoint server in my environment. And I just wanted to create four more servers just as the one that I already have. As you can see from the top graph, after configuring the project, I got a nice visualization at the top that clearly indicates me that after provisioning those four SharePoint VMs, I will, I will get into the red zone. And the red zones means that I'm going to get out of capacity and potentially get into some performance issues. So clearly, I don't have enough room to provision those four SharePoint VMs. And as you probably know, you guys are coming over here. We need to keep the show running. So I've been asked by my management, how many ES6 hosts do I need to add into my environment in order to be able to provision those four VMs? For that, I created another project. But in this particular case, instead of adding consumers, I wanted to edit providers, which are ES6 hosts. So with the short analysis that I've created with the new project, I found out that in order to, to provision those four SharePoint VMs that I'm talking about, I need to add two more ES6 servers from the same profile that I already have within that particular cluster. As, as you can see at the top graph over here, right after installing or provisioning the four VMs, the new VMs, I'm going to get into the red zone, but after adding those two new ES6 servers, I will get into the safe zone again, and I will also will have a little bit of room to provision some workloads in the future. So 
we are not just doing capacity analysis, and as Jay mentioned earlier, we are also doing optimization analysis. An optimization analysis is basically tells you how many resources you can, get, you can reclaim back from your environment and reuse them in the future. And I'm talking just about unused resources. So here you can see our new reclaimable waste detail page. And again, I'm talking about my vSphere cluster in this particular example. And as you can see, there are three main resource types that we can reclaim back. We can reclaim back virtual cores, we can reclaim back virtual memory, and we can reclaim back uh, disk space. So at the top, you can clearly understand how much you can reclaim from each type of resource. And at the bottom, you have this nice distribution view that can help you understand which resource you're wasting the most and who are uh, the top offenders. So not only that, one new enhancement that we added around this area is like Jay mentioned earlier, is the action framework. And the action framework allows us to run Python scripts or VCO workflows directly from the vCenter Operations Manager UI. And in this particular case, we are delivering an out-of-the-box workflow that if you will go into the oversized VM report, you will be able to launch it from there and just immediately reclaim back the resources from the VCOps UI without getting into vCenter and spend a lot of time for it. So basically, right now, you can go into the oversized VM report, launch an action, just select the VMs that you want to reclaim memory or memory or CPU back based on VCOps recommendation, and VCOps will actually automatically will do it for you. So we've talked a lot about capacity issues, which are very, very common risk issues. But there is another flavor of risk issues that I would like to talk about. And these particular issues are configuration issues. And for this particular example, I would like to pick up a problem or an issue that all of us are getting into on a daily basis, which is the VMware Tools version is out of date. And it happens to all of us right after we're upgrading an ES6 host, or it just happens to us because you know, somebody did, forgot to update the VMware Tools version within its VM. And I, unlike the flow that Jay showed you earlier, like getting into the detail page of the, um, of the alert itself and to analyze it, I want to tackle this one a little bit differently. So all of us know what is the problem here, and all of us know what is the solution. If my VMware tools is out of date, the, base, the only thing I need to do is just to upgrade the VMware tools version. And I don't want to get a lot of alerts around it and make like a big deal out of it. The only thing I want to get is a simple report that will tell me two things. I would like to get a nice distribution view at the top, a pie chart, that will show me what is the VMware tools version status situation across my environment. How many VMs are in a running the recent version, how many VMs are having tools out of date, how many VMs have tool not, no tools not supported, and how many of them are third party. And right below that, I would like to have a nice list that will show me all the non-supported VMs, all the VMs that are running not supported version of tools. For that, I will take advantage on the new functionality called views and reports. So views is the new way that we have in the system to visualize data. And again, it's not just the vSphere data. We will be able to visualize any type of data that we have in the system that's coming from each one of the management pack that we've mentioned earlier. The big advantage about views, that views can exist in two places. They can exist in a report, and they can exist on a dashboard. So basically, right now, you will be able to have the same visualization in your report and at the same time have the same thing within your dashboards. And what you have in your dashboards, the views that you have in your dashboards, you will be able to put them in your reports, which makes reports not more than just a group of several views together. So it's very, very easy to create. And I would like to show you a short example how to create a distribution view that I've just mentioned. 
So the first thing you need to do, you need to get into the view modeler. And again, no XMLs, no programming skills needed. Everything is a UI-based, very easy to use flow. And it starts with the view modeler. So in the view modeler, the first step that you need to do is just to choose the visualization type. And we, can visual, and we can visualize it as a list with just a table, as a distribution that could be a pie chart or a bar chart, an image and tags, and we will keep adding more and more visualization types in the future. After we choose the visualization type that in this particular case, I'm talking about a distribution and a pie chart, I will have to pick up the data. And the data, like I mentioned earlier, is a property that I have for a VM which is the VMware Tools status version. And after just double clicking on the proper data that I want, or just drag and drop it into the data grid, I will get the pie chart that I have on the top. So in less than five minutes, I can create a nice pie chart that will indicate me what is the VMware Tools version status in my environment and provide me an overview whether or not I'm doing a good job by maintaining my environment and keeping VMware Tools up to date. So like I've mentioned before, reports are not more than just a bunch of views together. So in order to create a report, the report that I've just mentioned earlier, all I need to do is to get into the report modeler and drag and drop the views that I want. So on the left side, you can see the list of all the views that I have in my system. And the first view that I will drag and drop is the new pie chart that we've just created. The second view that I want to drag into the same report is the list that I've talked about. And this list is coming out of the box. We, will, we have an out of the box list that tells you who are the VMs that having VMware tools out of date or not supported. So after combine those two views into a single report, all I need to do is just give it a name, save it, and run it against a container in my environment. One more advantage about our views and reports are that they are generic uh, forms. And it means that you will be able to take this report or to take each one of the views that I've just mentioned and run them against any containers of VM that we have in our system. So let's say I would like to know what is the distribution of the VMware tools version status in my cluster. I will be able to take this view and run it against the cluster. I would like to know what's happening in my data center. I will, I will run it against my data center. And I would like to know what happens in my entire environment. So I will run it against the top level in my environment. So you don't have to create those views and reports over and over again for each one of the objects that you have in your system. Those are completely generic definitions that you will be able to apply for each one of the objects that contains VMs in your environment in this particular example. The other thing that I would like to talk with you about that Jay mentioned earlier, it's our new platform. So as most of you remember, the guys who used to deal with VCOps in the past, we had two VMs. We had the UI VM and we had the analytics VM. And the way to get more, cap the, the way to get more capacity into VCOps was just to bump more CPU and memory into, into those two miserable VMs. So we actually got your feedback to listen to you. And what we found out that our customers don't want to scale up they also want to scale out. And with the 6.0 new architecture, we're scaling up as well as scaling out. So basically, you can start provisioning single node. And once you're getting out of capacity, you will be able to spin up another node and join it into the cluster. And you will be able to do it over and over again and increase your cluster capacity. One more thing that you need to know that since right now we are a cluster system, we will be able to provide AJ capabilities. So once you are turn the AJ feature on, we will be able to survive a failure of a single node. I don't know if many of you do used to, but we have uh, three platforms that we are supporting. We're supporting VA, Linux, and Windows. And with 6.0, one of the things that we are doing, we are aligning all the versions of the product across all those three platforms 
And we will, when we will deliver the same set of beats and the same functionality for all those three platforms, and we will keep maintaining them the same. Last but not least is the new self-monitoring model that, that we have added. So with VC Ops or V Realize Operations Manager, you can monitor applications, you can monitor uh, infrastructure elements, you can monitor a lot of things. And right now, out of the box, what you will get is a solution, an embedded solution that, will, that VC Ops will actually monitor itself and tells you if something is going wrong with our own system. So right after you will install VC Ops, we will start collecting data from the cluster itself, and you will get views, reports, dashboards, and alerts if something is going wrong, and you will be able to exactly understand what's going on in each, uh, in each point of time with your cluster. This is just a, a screenshot that I took from our cluster management area. And as you can see, you can, um, you can see from here what is the cluster status, if it's online, offline. You can see the AJ mode. You can see all the nodes which are part of the clusters, which build they're running, uh, which is the node type. Is it a master node, a data node, a remote collector? And at the bottom, you will be able to see which adapter instances are attached to each one of the nodes in the system. One more thing that we have done, uh, we have added a native support of remote collector. So in the past, remote collector used to be a little bit of a pain, but right now with 6.0, all you need to do is just install the bits, and once you're installing the node, you just need to pick the remote collector, and you're good to go. No extra configuration, no extra modification, everything is already there, and it's very, and actually we fix all the security issues and it's very, very secure right now. Um, the last thing I wanna cover with you guys before I'm getting the, uh, the remote back to Jay is our new SDK and APIs. So one of the major requirements that we got from you guys and from our partners is we want to use your, plat we want to use your platform to push data in and get it out in a more efficient way. So with 6.0, we're going to present a full set of REST APIs that will allow you, as well as our partners, to push data in and to get data out in a very, very easy way, as well as supported way that we will keep support in the future. Um, with that being said, I will pass the remote back to Jay. Thanks, Dr. Thank you. So, so I'm going to uh, for take the time scale into uh, the future uh, a little bit beyond what is being offered in the we realize 6 so suite and, and 6.1 suite, et cetera. So uh, from, a, from an evolution perspective, we've had, um, we, we started with many different management point products within VMware. Actually, when I joined VMware, I was first in charge of a product called Capacity IQ. How many of you have actually played with Capacity IQ? I see a few hands there, real old timers with, uh, with uh, VMware management. And then what we did was we integrated these tools um, into suites, right? And that's where we are today, is that we have the, the, op the V-Realize operations suite, the V-Realize automation suite, and the V-Realize business suite. Now, where we are going, though, is to, de to develop uh, our management into a cloud management platform, or in short, what we call a CMP. This is really revolutionary, because what we aim to do is change the game for IT management by ensuring that everything from provisioning to operations to your cost analysis and optimization is actually built upon a common set of uh, infrastructure uh, and operations policies, right? Uh, so, for example, um, let's, let's pick a use case. For example, if you are doing waste reclamation, right, which requires capacity data, which may be coming from V-Realize operations, right, it requires uh, cost data, which may be coming from V-Realize business, and it requires you to um, 
orchestrate uh, the, re the, rec the reclamation of uh, a VM which may actually have some reservation policies which were set using vRealize automation. Now all this has to be connected together so that when you're making decisions, when you're making remedial decisions, when you're taking actions on operations problems, you're actually keeping in mind the policies which were there when you actually provisioned the workloads when they came alive. And that's, what, that's why we are converging to the cloud management platform which will which will take all the aspects of operations and provisioning and automation and convert them into a set of services which will be shared across our management uh, products and our management suites. This entire set of services will then be available to our customers, to you, to be used on, as on-premise solutions which may be installed within your private cloud or as SaaS based solutions which will be there on vCloud Air. So the entire management suites will also be available as, as a SaaS form factor. And that's where we have launched these, the, the vRealize name, right? The, the vRealize name is, will be the name for our cloud management platform or our CMP. Uh, so right now we are in, in, the, in the evolutionary stage of this where we have they operate, we realize operations, we realize automation and we realize business and the SaaS versions of these are going to be called uh, uh, we realize air operations, we realize air automation and we realize air business. The air uh, stands for uh, it being hosted on the cloud air, right? There are also other components of the suite, we realize log inside and we realize orchestrator um, and these also have these new names for our cloud management platform. So uh, this is uh, the we realize suite six is what is being launched at this VM world and we realize operation 6.0 is a big part of that and that's really our, um, our uh, uh, purpose-built uh, platform uh, for, for, for hybrid cloud. More importantly, we are announcing a big wave of collaborations across the industry to ensure that the ecosystem is also building solutions on top of this vRealize platform. So pretty much every um, major vendor in the industry has a management pack, has coverage in vRealize operations so that their specific um, vendor uh, uh, offering has, uh, can be provisioned and managed and operated through vRealize operations. So we've really grown our ecosystem and you can see that on solutionsexchange.vmware.com. So I would like to pause here and actually open it up for, uh, for questions. Uh, to the audience, uh, if you if you have any, Tom and I will be happy to um, to answer your questions. And uh, it, and for those of you who are um, leaving for other sessions and stuff, I would just like to encourage you to please also fill out the survey before you do so, because your feedback is really important to us. But the floor is open for questions. Yes, I will try to repeat your questions. The actions out of the VC ops or the vRealize uh, operations. So the question is, uh, in terms of capacity and the providers, are there any plans to actually be able to automate most of the deployment of the providers? For instance, spinning, spinning up new instances of ESX hosts and this kind of stuff. Um, that, that's a great question. And what we created, the action framework itself, is not limited to any particular use case. We're delivering the out-of-the-box workflows, like 10 or 15 of them, but you will be able to create your own Python scripts, your own VCO workflow, and tie them into VC ops. So you want to open a service desk ticket, you want to provision two ESX hosts, you want to put a host in maintenance mode, you will be able to create your own VCR workflows or, or use your existing VCR workflows in order to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, there is another one over there. And okay. The mic is over there, so. All right. Sorry, actually I have two questions. The first question is, 
Am I able to upgrade my PCOps 5.x version, or is it a new installation? Uh, that's that's a great question too. So. 6.0 is a completely new architecture, and we will have a migration path between 5x and 6.0, and it will be a side-by-side -side installation. So you will still have your 5x, and it needs to be 5.8.1 and above, and you will install side-by-side -side a 6.0 version. You will migrate all the data, all your dashboards, or your configuration, all your data into the 6.0 one. You will be able to keep monitoring the, sa the same vCenter server, and once you will have a successful migration and you will be happy with it, you'll just be able to shut down your 5.8 and start using your 6.0. And what happens to my old licenses? Old licenses? Yeah. If they're under, under support and subscription, we will up, upgrade them into the 6.0 version. Yeah, the, the licensing pretty much uh, remains the same. Like, you know, if you, whatever you were entitled to in 5x, you're also entitled to that in, in 6.0. Question. I have some questions regarding the VC of scale-out design architecture you just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, you said that there are three platforms. So, for example, there's a Linux or Windows ins installer in the virtual appliance. That's true. Um, the Linux appliance is a slash based system, I guess, like before. It's a, yeah, it's a slash based like before, okay. but in a newer version of it. And uh, which other Linux distributions are supported? Because you mentioned the Linux installer as well. Sorry, can you repeat? Um, you mentioned as well that it's possible to install it on a Linux system. So yeah, on a Red Hat. Installer. Which distributions are supported? Uh, it's Red Hat, I think, 5 dot something, uh, 5 something and above. We will publish it as part of the product documentation. It's based on our QE coverage. But basically, I think you can run it on 5 and above, but it's not final yet. Okay, so the focus is on Red Hat and Apple Linux? Yeah. Okay. And uh, is it possible to define um, or to combine uh, multiple system architectures? So for example, your first system is an appliance, the second system is a Linux uh, system. And, uh, so, the yeah, systems. for the first version, for 6.0, we will support a cluster. The local clusters needs to be of, with the same platform. So if the cluster will be just Linux-based or just Windows-based or just VA-based. And in the future, uh, we might be able to support other configurations. It's just a matter of coverage. We don't see any major issue with it, but we don't want to put it out there without testing it properly. Okay, thank you. No problem. Question there. You were talking, you, you talked about uh, clustering. Uh, what about the multi-site uh, monitoring in a single pane of glass? Do you have like a federation? Oh, that, that, that's a great question. So, do you want to take it? Yeah, sure. So, um, I, the question is actually about federation. That means, and, and you know, many organizations have different needs for federation uh, that we've spoken to. Uh, some people just have, um, you know, two data centers very far off in the world, and they want to have one vCenter operations or vRealize operations here, one vRealize operations there, and then they want to have a single pane of glass. Others have security zones and other requirements due to which they need to localize the management and then export off some metrics. So right now we don't have a federated uh, solution, but uh, in, in our roadmap we, are, um, we have actually are planning to deliver a, uh, what we are internally terming as a fed light solution because you don't want it to aggregate all the data together and blow up your your uh, we realize collection what uh, we want to allow is uh, a we realize operations uh, instance which can take selective metrics and specific dashboards uh, which you want to roll up into a federation solution and uh, bring it to bear uh, it's in our roadmap uh, there is just one more thing i just to sure. want to add is just if you had let's say a main site and you have 10 small branches we do have a solution for that. You can put a component like that I mentioned before remote called a remote collect. collector. It will collect the data from the remote side, compress the data, and will send it back into the main cluster. So again, if you're not getting into any scale concerns, there is nothing that prevents you actually from doing that and put remote collectors all over your remote side, compress the data over there, and send it back into the main cluster to create a single pane of glass. Yeah, and the remote collectors are also designed so they don't uh, overload the WAN, right? Because they only collect the differences in the data and send those across the wire. So they are a pretty good uh, workaround uh, uh, un until we have a full, big, fully baked federated solution. 
regarding the timeline uh, our you know in our it's in our roadmap for next year but you can't hold us accountable for for any uh, roadmap plans because obviously these go through several r and d cycles and sprints and we have to uh, see what is deliverable there other questions i guess okay. not all right thank, thank you, you very everybody. much we really appreciate your time <laughs>